Hello, guys. Hi. Hey, hello. hello. Nice hello. to see you all. So let's give it a couple more minutes just until everybody joins us, because I guess the, there should be more and more coming. So let's enjoy these minutes in silence. <laughs> coming from say it again how Where do you do music from? on zoom well i'm streaming music just for you to feel nice to relax oh, wow. cool. thank you but how do oh. you do that <laughs> oh okay so i guess we have to make another webinar <laughs> yeah right shall i shall i start 15 from... minutes video on how to stream music on zoom <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah yeah this is well it's super simple all you have to do is just click share screen and there you have three options. You have basic, you have advanced and files. So when you have basic, you have an options to share desktop, whiteboard, um, different windows, yeah, different tabs. And if you click advanced, you will see computer audio. So when you click on computer audio, basically you stream, you share only computer sound. So make sure you don't stream something that is not supposed to be streamed. Yeah, but only music. Yeah, don't turn on any movies, whatever you, you, you don't want to be streamed. Yeah. But it's a cool option. Okay, it's a cool, it's a, it's a really cool feature. Yeah. When in the moment like that, we would like to, yeah, to have this, to sit not just in silence, but to have this kind of a comfortable moment. You can, tr you can stream music, any favorite. Yeah. That you, that you like. So four minutes. Yeah. Normally, how long does it take for them to join? Ira, how do you think? Um, I guess you can actually start because five, seven minutes and that's all. And then everybody yeah. comes, you know, when the-, when the Okay, on the way, on the way. Yeah. Well, yeah, guys, so thank you for coming. Uh, well, let me, I think I can just start it with a- uh, I just wanna tell, you know, I'm not a pro in making fabulous, um, sparkling presentations yeah um, i guess everyone has its his strong suits so this one definitely is not my strong suit but anyway i hope you're going to enjoy the way the information goes yeah and um, and so on so i guess i can show you this beautiful slideshow shall you work slideshow yes so presenting vocabulary and it's actually based on real events, right? Because um, in some extent, I would like to tell about something that I went through, that I understood that I've realized how to do it in the best way. And while my cat right now is trying to smack all the flowers on the shelf, 
I hope she's not going to do it. <laughs> so I, I will not have to stand up and catch all the plants. I hope it's not going to happen. So I will try to share with you everything I know, everything. Uh, well, I hope it's going to be like, maybe it's not going to be everything. Probably we're going to make another part of the webinar later. Yeah, like this to be continued, part two, whatever. But let's see what we got. Let's see what we got. So some smart ideas like when students travel, they don't carry grammar books, right? They carry dictionaries. Um, any ideas? What, 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 what is it? Does it, make, does it any, make any sense for you? Does it ring the bell? Is it actually true? Do you agree with it? Probably no. I, I'm not saying it's true. But do you think true. it's actually? Huh? True. This is true. Why is it true? What, what? Because you can have a dialogue with no grammar, but you can have a dialogue with no vocab. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, yeah, grammar is not always crucial to be understood. I'm not saying, yeah, I, I wrote it like grammar is not needed to be understood, but I, and I changed it like not always crucial to be understood. Yeah, because sometimes it, you may sound really awful, but only in few words, they are sufficient to express oneself. Yeah, it can be something like coffee too large, please. Yeah, yeah. okay. Oh, no, no more words, man. Here's your coffee. Here's your large coffee. I got you, right? Subway where? It's over there, right? Go straight ahead. So you see grammar is not so necessary, but the vocabulary, uh, this is, that is something that we're always losing on the way and something that is really difficult to, uh, to kind of get back and... Uh, pick it up again yeah because it's difficult to go back always and it's painful right so it's very important to be able to absorb the right vocabulary at the right time so yeah we do not communicate with meanings uh we'd rather create meanings using words so what do i mean by that have you ever learned your own language by memorizing definitions of each word like remember yourself doing this have you ever really done this have you ever learned it like to speak like you speak today in Russian or Ukrainian? Not at all. Not at all. Well, it, some it, vocabulary may be more advanced vocabulary or the vocabulary that you haven't learned in your real life. Sometimes you read books or you hear complicated dialect and you have to find definitions and actually learn those words. But maybe a more common one you just learn from context. Yeah. Of course, of course, uh, every day we're going to find those, yeah, different worlds of those that we know and those, these words that we have to check up and look for, right, and to understand the meaning. But still, right, we've lived through everything and somehow we experienced it and we, we just know it. How do I know it? I just lived through this, right? You've lived each word. So do I have to explain you what the hammer is before using it, right? So, you know, I give you the hammer you will just hit with it, right? Just take and hit it. You're not gonna open the dictionary and okay, hammer is this. It's like, you know, it's like when you have this bike in your garage, you, but the only thing you do is you open the garage and you look at your bike and then you close it and you never use it. Like the same, it's only to have the meaning, right? But never use the word. So let's try teaching not only meanings, right? Uh, the next thing that I would like you to do is to think is just uh, a little bit of, how would I say, not to make you confused. This is, there will be some materials, some uh, screenshots from our platform, from our presentations. In no way uh, would I like to uh, say that this is something wrong or you should not use them of course it's all okay it's your bag it's your basis right this is where you have to go for start from right but tell me please what are other ways like what are the ways here to present this vocabulary you can text in uh, in zoom just all the possible ways that you think how would you present this vocabulary to the students they've never heard about it right this is the first time but how would you do this? You can use Zoom uh, chat and let's see some, some ideas that you've got.
Mm -hmm. The serious name. The serious name. Anything else? Context, a big word. Yeah. Serious name, eight for to gossip. Mm -hmm. Give synonyms. That's very good. Okay, okay, okay. So uh, I have a question, really. I don't want to. Oh, okay. Yeah, so what is the, the series name actually? Maria, what is that? I haven't heard about that. Yeah, there or is maybe a I'm... series called Gossip Girl. Uh, it's Spletnitsa in Russian. Oh, and okay. a lot of people know about it. So I usually mention it when I present this vocabulary. And some students, oh, I know the series, so I know what its word is. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah, they can have this association from what they already know, right? Okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. We can give synonyms, so we can, yeah, examples, right? What kind of examples, Princess? Examples of what? Examples of this word in a very vivid, obvious context, I would say, or, right. or a series of examples. Or a series of examples, right? So yeah, like, did you hear that she got pregnant? She got knocked up like last month, and then she's hiding, and so on and so forth, right? So an example with actual situation, basically, that yeah. this word describes. Yeah. So you see, it's so interesting. The serious context, synonyms, examples, but none of you, nobody s said something like, "Oh, let's start from the definition." Yeah, let's start from the definition because how how on earth can you um, yeah, present vocabulary and know it without knowing the definition. But right, I absolutely agree with you, right? So we can also mimic, we can act. Yes, of course, probably just mimicking and acting at first here will be kind of confusing. Yeah, about gossiping, they will say, oh, what are you doing, whispering? And then you would probably ask some concept checking questions. Oh, yes, whispering about other people, but they don't like it, right? So something like that give examples from everyday life here, yeah, this context, because as we mentioned before, we lived through the words, we lived through every word from every, through each item. That's why, that's why, yes, it's a great thing to give examples from everyday life. And also, again, yeah, provide context in a sentence, which basically like, like the second thing. So we see that, um, and you know that you don't need this uh, meaning, you don't need the definition. The you have uh, a lot of tools that you already know that you can use first rather than definitions. So know the word, be the word. Yeah, so teach vocabulary in context. Again, let's move on. So yeah, we use student-centered uh, student techniques, meaning you always focus on what students, student can tell you based on what he already know. Of course, it includes uh, eliciting concept checking questions a lot, but Every time this is your starting point, you focus on a student. Um, and since then, since this moment, they will, it's going to be like their 80% speaking time, but not yours. Yeah. So good context creates meaning, which adds memory. Good context supports learning independence. Of course, they have these neural connections in their brains. They, they start making these connections between the world and their experience in what you telling them and then they understand it more on their feelings something awakens inside yeah and they ah okay i got it i got it i felt it i lived through the word so i don't need, there's no need you telling me any definition yeah be careful though grade your language because if you're going to be explaining no matter what type of context yeah <laughs> Uh, no matter what uh, type of context, they will just get lost. They will not understand you. A level, A1 level, yeah, A2, C1. See the difference, right? Stick to the topic of the lesson. If the word is embarrassed, 
you cannot you can but i would not recommend you talking about given the context about something you know about spaceships about elon musk and uh, uh, setting up a colony on mars because yeah, it doesn't make sense it makes sense for you but it's more reasonable to give something uh, that sticks to the topic and they can discuss the topic within it right use target topic yeah vocabulary or grammar creating yeah or grammar creating new context so again something that you already talk about the vocabulary that you have if you have the word embarrassed then you probably have ashamed then you probably have nervous uh on pins and needles right and the grammar that you have around this topic use it don't use anything else because again and again you will motivate them to use the material of the week so what do we have here after the wedding they went to the caribbean on their honeymoon and um, i would like to ask somebody to act with me to play play this out i can see Ira as the first person on my screen so what does the word what does the word honeymoon mean Ira? um i don't know um, okay what type of word is it mm, guess it's a noun yep and when does it happen after the wedding right so good and what kind of verb does it use Mm, just a second uh, mm, go maybe right good so it's a uh oh a holiday like a holiday after the wedding the day right exactly together. well done well done so it's a holiday after the wedding this honeymoon again we kind of a uh, thank you you know we kind of a uh, revealed the meaning but still until the moment we revealed the meaning there was a lot to say there was a lot to come to right so let's keep going um okay so what do we have here oh is it? yeah another example here all of my friends are so generous whenever they see me being hungry they share some snack and here it goes so do you think my friends are kind and i can possibly ask uh, uh, i don't know maria there was a maria yeah yeah, I am a Maria, for example. Okay, okay. Do you think my friends are kind? Uh, yes, they are. How do you know that based on the sentence that I made? Uh, because they share or give thanks when you need them. Right, so is generous a positive word? Uh, yes. Are you generous? Do you think your friends are generous? Can you prove it? Uh, I think I'm generous. I share sausage with my cat. Good. So generous can only be used when we discuss food, right? Uh, maybe no. I think generous person is the one who can give money, kindness, something like that. Exactly. Exactly. Right. Thank you, Marie. Thank you so much. So you see, again, we don't have these meanings, right? We put them in the context and we're trying to uh, provoke a dialogue, a simple dialogue, right? It shouldn't go like too much to be too long. You have to control it, right? But still, again, it's a very, it's a good idea to make it before the class to, uh, to think of some different ways, how you go, what you're going to say, what you're going to ask, what example, what example are you going to set? Yeah. So, and uh, if you do everything properly, luck, right? So move it. Uh, mime, gestures, acting out, um, sometimes cool, sometimes not, sometimes understandable, sometimes not, but still it's a good way to present different, different words, like what, for example, what kind of words can be presented using gestures, mimes, acting out? Some emotions. Emotions, yes. Yeah, emotions are good for that. Absolutely. You can do, do no matter what with your face, right? Mm, some sort of hands. actions, like some, drink, uh, read a book if you take a book in your hand. Yes, yes, absolutely. So, right, it's actions, emotions. Also, we can add emphasizing sometime um, in order to make students not being so, you know, uh, 
simple in the way they talk, right? Not just like they read a book, but they play, they act it out. They are trying to feel what they say, right? So, right, focus is attention, clear, clear understanding of what, you, what you're showing. Yes, it's fun. It suits for everybody, I guess. And we can have some examples here. So, again, we have to try to act this out, right? So, if I tell you, for example, Ira, can you make this one with me? So, what is this? <coughs> oh, it's a cough. Oh, you have to read what, what it says. Oh, sorry. Sneezing. <laughs> but you're so smart. Uh, no, <laughs> that's sneezing. Uh huh. Um, hiccups? Uh, that's what hiccup is. Uh huh. So, oh, a cough. It's a cough. Yes, <laughs> exactly. It's a cough. It's a cough. So just act along the way. Thank you, Ira. How can you emphasize it? It's a little a bit more complicated here because right I, I i like made them bold these places where we can possibly act it out but let's give it a try princess can you help me um do i need to be seen you gonna... uh, oh yeah i guess it would be nice is it possible then then no <laughs> then no who can be seen who can be seen I know Irina can be seen, somebody else who can be seen. Okay, Ira, you, you're, you're amazing today. Can you do that? Of course, yeah, my pleasure. Uh, yes, yeah, so you can, you, you can be first. Okay, hey, how are you? Not bad, thanks, and you? Great, what have you been up to lately? Oh, you know, not much, right? You can say like not much or like this, not much, uh, but I'm keeping myself busy. Well, okay, that's been good seeing you. Yeah, okay then. Bye bye. See ya. Right, so different gestures, different em you, to emphasize what you're saying. Uh, probably millions of different situations where you can do that, but this is, this is just an example. Um, right. So, again, this guy, right? We have this definition, we have uh, the picture, but we probably understand everything from the picture. We don't need this meaning again, the definition again. So we can do something like that. So I will uh, ask Irina, do you think I like our class? Oh, yes, you actually look happy and your gesture shows that. <laughs> Am I bored? Mm, no, you're not. Right. I'm not bored. I'm very excited. Yeah. Are you bored sometimes? Yeah, I'm actually bored when I'm home alone. Great. Now, you see, Irina, she understands what bored is. On the contrast between how I'm happy, I'm excited, and when I'm really bored and I just can't stand it anymore. Very good. So, again, a very cool thing when uh, I came up with, maybe it's not great, but I think it works nicely. Uh, you have some uh, you have some vocabulary and uh, probably, uh, so you got some vocabulary and you try to find some illustrations, some pictures, some make, making some screenshots and presentation with the, uh, with the screenshots that illustrate the, basically the, the word like, yeah. So in this case, we have to sit on a fence. So yeah, like the picture is really direct, but, but still just to make it fun. And I add some already prepared prompts for students to continue to add to already existing beginning. So, okay, you can, it, it can be like any topic, but again, as we already said, and we understood that it's better to stick to the topic. So for example, right, you can say, you, can, you cannot sit on a fence any longer. Yeah, let's do something, go and find your job, earn some money. Uh, I forgot to say that, again, suitable after students already know the meaning, yeah? So when they already understand what's going on, what the sit on a fence is, you can do it like that. You can give them some ideas so they can think, they can put them in different situations and they can give you their examples, right? Based on your prompts. Uh, money will not come just like that. So stop what, Ira? Stop sitting on the fence. Yeah, stop That's sitting on a fence then. because not, nothing's going to happen. Nothing's going to happen. Absolutely. Right? Another example here. Up in the air. 
right? We know, they already know what this is, right? Like the situ this is the situation that is very uncertain and uh, we are not sure what's gonna happen next, right? We're not sure. So we can't launch this project now, Princess? Our future is up in the air. Ah, okay. I meant that there was, there was supposed to be the second example, but this is beautiful. Ah, anyway. okay. Yeah. Ah, so then you want me to finish the first one. We can't launch this project now. Because what? Because our budget is up in the air, maybe. Absolutely, right. So it's it's very right. It's a cool example because not the project. Project is up in the air. It's clear. But because of what? Because the budget is up in the air. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, right. Our future is what, Princess? Our future is dim and distant and uncertain. And uncertain. Because my career is up in the air. Is up in the that? air. Absolutely. Yes. Awesome. I'm not sure what plans are for a weekend, for, for the next month, Maria? I'm not sure what plans are. <laughs> wow, I have no idea, actually. They are yeah. up in like the air vacation. due to coronavirus. <laughs> vacation, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, you can say it like that. Mm. Sorry, your I don't have any imagination for that example. <laughs> Your vacation is up in the air, right? I mean, you were thinking about having a vacation, but now your plans are uncertain because all this is up in the air, no tickets, COVID and stuff, yeah. Okay, another one, right? To make up your mind, which bracelet do you like more? Vera. I don't know, I haven't made up my mind yet. Absolutely, she decided to call him. Can you rephrase it, Princess? Rephrase it using to make up uh, my mind, your mind. Her she mind. decided to call him. Uh, she made up her mind to call him. Absolutely. What about these jeans? Ha what about these jeans? Um, you Have know. you made up your mind? Oh, okay, okay, Princess, you, you're, on the, you're on the ball today. <laughs> I'm not sure. I haven't made up my mind yet about Absolutely. being on the ball. Absolutely. <laughs> okay, but you are, you are. I can hear it in your voice. So, not by the book, right? We have everything that is by the book there. But sometimes um, you can just, it's all useful, it's all nice, but probably you can skip it for now, for some part of the class, and do it next, for example, right? In this case, this uh, exercise is cool because it provides context. You can see on the left, you have a context, you have the key vocabulary, and student can, students can understand what's going on. But then you have definitions, like if everything is done correctly, they will understand everything right away after the, after the context, but the meaning will just take some time to read, to work on again. Yes, yeah, so probably they already understand everything. So what can be done next? Oh, actually we can try to, um, at this point, I can show you, uh, tell you some, one of the uh, ways how you can present the vocabulary or probably at this point already to have some production from students uh, in Zoom. So for this, I would like you to, if you see the second, the second screenshot, which is the longer one, you have number one, view options. You can click view options. Then you can, I think we can make it with one student, but then you can later, you can check it. Irina, can you help me? View options, then you click annotate, and then you click choose basically uh, this, line right wavy line and choose for, for example Sorry. the net the, I, I the get, I'm narrow on my phone, so it's not so comfortable to do who is from who's from uh computer? Help. oh maria you can help so yeah view options annotate and then you choose this wavy thing which is called draw yeah, yeah. draw tool and there you can choose a arrow uh-huh you can choose arrow basically at this point. I hope so. Um, yeah, I hope so. So, right, you can do that. You can, all right, match, absolutely. So <laughs> now all I want you to do is to match words on the left to words on the right. Probably the class, all of you can help us to do it, right? So commute with by bus or in time or money, gain confidence or gain taxes. What is it? Commute by bus, perfect. Oh, oh, Tanya, Tanya joined us. Awesome. Earn money. Earn money. Yeah. Uh, 
deliver in time, probably raise taxes. Raise taxes, yeah, is it it? One, two, three, four. Awesome, beautiful. You see, but again, this can be done. Uh, I think by default, this option is available. It's enabled, like annotation is enabled by default. But as you see on the picture one, it like says disable. If you don't want them to draw on your screen uh, accidentally, you can click disable annotation in options. So basically this is how can it be done? Super simple, super cool. Um, and again, me as a teacher, I can make it like this. And we clean this up. So very useful. Let's move on. Again, we work with the same words. After we've done all this, now I would like them to work completely to understand, yeah, which words they can use in what kind of situations. So here we see the boy, right? And he, he's doing some actions and probably he also feels somehow inside. So can you please tell me, Princess, what did he raise? What did, what did he raise? Maybe confidence or he raised what he raised. Direct, probably. Uh -huh. So you want me to tell me what he raised? He raised something. Ah, like his arms. His arms. He raised his yeah. arms, right? Why mm -hmm. he raised his arms? Why did he do it? How, did, how does he, he feel? He is impersonating Superman. Yeah, so he gains something because he feels like that. He feels he's a Superman. He's cool. What did he gain? Confidence. He gained confidence, right? He raised his hand, he closed his eyes, and he gained confidence. That's why he actually raised hands, and this is exactly why he looks like that. Absolutely. So we can work here. Uh, maybe Tatiana can join us. Can you? Yes, yes, I can. Oh, awesome. Very good. So here, what, you, what you'd better use, what is the best option is to gain something in yeah, Looking gain experience, gain. Uh, yes. You gain experience, right? If you gain knowledge, yes. yes, gain yes. knowledge after, at your job after gaining experience, you will earn, earn more money, earn more money. Beautiful, of course, of course, you will. Yeah, now we have <laughs> here, right? Raise, earn, gain. So now you can do it on your own, try right, Princess. Can you do that? Making sentences. Yeah, you could try. Look at this guy. He's again, he's kind of a holding hands up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so he has raised his hands, right? Because he has probably earned himself a raise. Yeah. And he gained, I don't know, I don't know what he gained. <laughs> also success. Confident. Success. Success. Success, right. Uh, he gained some respect, I guess, as well. Mm -hmm. in, in the best company. experience ever. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So again, these beautiful, <laughs> see, they all raising something. They all raise, mm -hmm. raising something. Okay, Ira, can you help me with that one? So as far as I see, they have raised up their hands. Absolutely, their but uh, do you think they, they resigned? I guess not, because there are like, sorry, but to all for that. So they have retired. <laughs> right, do they work? No, they don't. Why? Because they are already at the age of uh, chilling up without working. Right, right, absolutely. They retired, right? And this guy, and this guy, uh, yeah, Maria, what is going on here? Again, something with his hand, with his arm. Yes, yeah, and... sorry. Uh, raised hand, and he probably resigns. Why do you think? Why? He, why doesn't he retire? Uh, because, uh, first of all, he doesn't look old. Second of all, the situation on the picture doesn't seem like he's retiring. Absolutely. Absolutely. He just says, come on, guys. I hate you all. Bye-bye. I hope I'll yeah, see exactly. you never. I hope I never see you again. Absolutely. Yeah. So the next thing that we can use are clients. Uh, Klein is basically like, uh, if you know the word incline, like from the smallest to the highest, from the tiniest to the biggest, from the slowest to the, uh, to the, to the, to the fastest, yeah? So these are clients, degrees of something, mm -hmm. different types of degrees, Kelvin clients, yeah? So you can explore a student's prior knowledge of vocabulary using that. 
as a discussion topic in one group or a whole class, support students to expand their vocabulary, may assist as a concept check. So basically you have a, a blank for, yeah, let's say like a for, for the client. And in, in this case, you have this topic size from the smallest to the largest. And here you can just you can probably make the same thing, do the same thing again. You can use annotation and your kids or your students, your adult students, they will put numbers on them very quickly. Yeah, and they will decide which one, uh, which one is going from the smallest and to the largest. Very cool. So they are doing something, they are thinking, they are involved. It's fun. It's cool. Um, right now, I would like you to use annotation again and to circle uh, those uh, elements which you think are, or probably not circle, I would like you to write them on the top using the same annotation tool, uh, using the same annotation tool and to write in them in the right order. There's a, there is an annotation tool and T letter, T letter which you use as a text and you can put them in the right order here. Um, I can possibly make it this way i can put here we're going to have here we're going to have irina on this line oh i'm sorry this is not the right language yeah and here we're going to have oh you want to make it this way i thought you're gonna yeah and here we can have tanya for example so in front of your in front of your names you can type. You can type the order, the right order of these uh, words, from the quickest to the longest. It doesn't really it's matter. Not comfortable for me, so maybe you're gonna choose somebody else. So I'm. Oh, okay, okay, yes. okay. Who can do that? Who can do that? Oh my God! What happened? Oh, I can't. Okay. So I will just try to make it like this. Okay, can we try to do this? Mm -hmm. So just write the words in the uh, yeah, in, in the right side. order. In right order. Yes. As you mm -hmm. think, day is the quickest or mile second is the quickest. Tanya types in front of her name. Maria types in front of her name. Just numbers uh -huh. or milliseconds. No, I mean, I mean the whole, the whole word, the whole ah, word. Okay. word. Mm -hmm. Yes, just in front of your name, because you only have to choose text letter T when you use the tool. Yeah, you choose not draw, yes. but you choose letter T text. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely! It goes like that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. So That's this is this... yes. Right, right. So this is basically uh -huh. this is basically what your students can do, right? The only thing you have to explain them to send the instructions, some screenshots, where they can find this annotate button because they are struggling finding it. Absolutely insane. Yeah, it's it seems to be very difficult for them. So right, this is how you do it, and you can make some. Like you have to, you can organize a competition. Who's, who's going to be the fastest one? Yeah. On your screen. Who's going to be the fastest to arrange? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's enough. It's pretty clear. Thank you for participation. I wanted to make it here, but I think it's all clear right now. Yeah. Let's, oh, Maria. Okay. I, I can see you, your examples too. Awesome. Awesome. So you see how it works. The same yes. we can do here, right? You can write all the names of your students, of your students and in front of every name, next to each name, they will uh, they will write their answers from the slowest, for example, to fastest. Yeah, as in this example. So I think we can actually move on from this one. First, I was confused. What does Fortnite? <laughs> What's Fortnite, Fortnite doing? Two, there? Weeks, <laughs> two weeks time. Yeah, two and weeks. Then, oh, then I longer. remember that it's not just a game. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not just a game. It's two weeks time. It's two weeks time. Awesome. <laughs> Uh, Svetlana, you, I haven't noticed it before th that you also participated, but it's cool, but it's cool. Yeah, I don't know how it works, but like you're supposed to press enter, I guess. 
yeah, yeah, for yeah, it to, yeah. to to it for it to appear on to appear screen. yeah if you right if you don't press from your end if you don't click press enter it will not appear i will not see it mm -hmm. and i will think mm -hmm. you're the last one yeah so again you can draw it right you can use the same the same tools uh -huh. in in zoom and you can draw it to make it more vivid bright and your kids or again your adult uh, adults they can also use uh, either text or they can draw yeah using uh, their mouse or touch bar anything i mean anything can be used here any types of words you can you can think of it yeah different degrees from uh, from zero to 100 from smallest to biggest and so on and so on pretty cool and they they review other vocabulary they start thinking remembering something from the past so yeah what is real neo what is real neo by the way are you so i i'm planning on going to see the to watch that ma matrix that is coming out very soon yeah for sure yeah 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 so i highly <laughs> recommend i've been waiting for it yeah use realia real objects pretty cool right and you can use also illustrations as we as we already mentioned um, in zoom of course uh, fun focuses attention clear uh, for understanding yeah so again some uh, cons that not all objects can be brought to the class right so you can look around and you see what you have right so you can have it yeah you cannot brought a tank in a class well you can draw it but you can you cannot bro bring it and not everything can be drawn, I guess. So something is really like some abstract things, right? You cannot draw them. Probably if you try to, you will lose your time only. So, um, mm -hmm -hmm. Princess, can I ask for your help, Svetlana? So mm -hmm. oh, what, is, what is this? What is this? That is an arm. Uh, no, this, this all. What is this? Oh, a t-shirt. Well, it has long sleeves. It's too warm to be a t-shirt and it has a hood. So it's a hoodie. Exactly. It's a hoodie, right? I'm wearing a hoodie. That's a hoodie. So this is the way you can probably use with watch on your hand. Yes. Compare it to the clock, hoodie to the t-shirt and so on. Using comparisons also very nice. Yeah. In this case. So you can possibly set a scene right use a scenario and plus some concept checking questions so there was a case you know when uh, once uh, i was standing in in a, in a queue in a bank in a line and i was i don't know what happened but my pants they suddenly uh, fell down i lost my pants and there were lots of people around me watching me and uh, how did i feel you know I guess embarrassed. Oh, there was to be there was supposed to be the class answer. Class embarrassed, embarrassed. Yeah. So did I feel silly? <laughs> Probably yes. Uh, was I comfortable? Not at all. What color was my face? I guess there was red. Were people watching me? <laughs> of course. Right. I was very, very embarrassed. Have you ever been embarrassed, Ira? Of course. I have never had such situations, but I've got a lot of them to be embarrassed about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not a it's not a best scenario to lose pants That's in, true. in a bank in a bank. Yes, right. <laughs> probably because you're wearing a gun to rub it. OK, so you see setting scenes again, you have you just have to think what is the best way uh, in specific situation, which tool, which type of presenting you will choose at specific at specific moment maybe both maybe several maybe one right but always let's think that uh, using a uh, meaning the definition is like the, putting it on the first place it's not the best way so the more the better yeah we can expand vocabulary check what students already know uh, we can use we can work with collocations so let's think what collocations right it it can we can think what we, uh, it can show you what they already know, what they remember from the previous classes to check their knowledge, what they already have, right? And to teach something new, probably fun, competitive in this, uh, in this type of situation. You have different words like crime, give, set, rise. What are possible collocations? What other words can you put before it or after it? 
Let's brainstorm some ideas. What about crime? What do you think? What can we do with crime or before crime? Commit. 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 Investigate. Inve oh, okay, investigate, right. So crime yeah. investigation. Crime investigation. Beautiful. You see. Crime you see. scene. Crime scene. Commit a crime investigation. So many. Bloody right. crime. Commit a crime. So Svetlana gets points today. <laughs> okay. Uh, Tanya, up. Oh, awesome. You see, you, you predict it. You predict it. It's going to be up. Give up. Yes. Awesome. Give, 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 give more. Give more for give. Give away. Give, give a away. Give away. Give a sentence. Give a sentence. Give an example. Give an example. Give, give an example. Give a hand. Yeah. Give away. Give in. Give up. Awesome. Awesome. What about set? Set up. Set the clock. Set the, the clock. alarm clock. The alarm clock. Set off. Mm -hmm. set, set a scene. record set mm -hmm. a scene set a record true um rice we've been talking a lot about rice up to this moment sunrise sunrise yes. right oh but but a question to you did we talk then about rice or about no, something different we race we talked about we talked about race absolutely yes yeah, so we can rise above right mm -hmm. so cool yeah so Again, probably working with some prepositions. Good at, right? What are you good at? Uh, what are you good at, uh, Svetlana? Uh, providing examples that are unforgettable. Please say this in the sentence. I, I haven't heard it in your sentence. Good at. Mm -hmm. I am good at making such examples that my students will never forget. This is a very common situation when your students they keep telling you everything except the, key, the target vocabulary. They don't do it. And I always, guys, wait, 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 wait. I show them like this, not like this, but like this. Do it this way. And they understand, ah, oh, okay, sorry, Alex. I know, I know, I know. And they use the, key, uh, the target vocabulary. Um, interested in, what are you interested in, Irina? I'm interested in the reading. In reading okay awesome awesome yes and afraid what do you think going to be the next uh, the next preposition here oh. Mm -hmm. maria oh. oh arthur arthur you are not maria <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> but i'm glad to hear our arthur i'm so glad to hear him yes yeah, so arthur you said what oh afraid of off absolutely what are you afraid of are you afraid of something yeah, anything. I'm afraid of spiders and snakes. <laughs> You're afraid of spiders and snakes, but snakes and spiders, is it a verb or an activity? Oh, uh, it's like noun. Right, so you, we have ing, so what do you have to use? Okay, some verb. Yeah, so yeah. I'm afraid of watching uh, at spiders and snakes, and snakes or touching. Yes, I'm afraid of touching them, absolutely. Absolutely. I was crazy about touching snakes when I was a kid. <laughs> really, I mean, I was, I was. I, crazy that, in a good way or bad way? In a good way. I was caressing them and I was... Uh... Their skin are <laughs> so touchable. Touchable, touchable, yes. Mind your language, connotation, right? Different meanings, different, uh, like, two sides of the coin, yeah? We could say, is it positive or negative word in the view of society? For example, positive connotation, go-getter is a determined and ambitious person, right? Mm -hmm. Youthful, it's lively, curious, but you must be careful saying that. Overachiever, you know, these people who are crazy about high grades at school, they are overachievers in a bad way, like they are going too much, over too much, yeah? Childish. Yeah, you're being so childish. Oh, come on. No, I'm, I'm 30 years old. I'm, I'm not being childish. Yeah, but if you tell me I'm youthful, oh, cool. I'm youthful. That's okay. But childish, I don't like people see me like I'm acting as a child. Yeah, I don't want it. And you don't want it too. So, again, you can show it to them as, yeah, as, as a uh, contrast. What, what is good, what is not. So, um. Jenny, you look so skinny today, uh, right? Oh, actually, it, it must be something, some of you will say this, right? Maria, can you help me? You can call somebody skinny. 
Sure. <clears throat> you look skinny today. Uh, Maria, is skinny positive or negative? Uh, it's negative. Yeah, it's negative. So what's more positive than skinny? Slim. Slim, right. So, so what will you say? What is your example again? You're looking slim today. You're looking slim today, right? Not skinny, like, oh my gosh, I need to gain on, put on weight, right? So skin negative, slim positive in this case. Yeah. So, oh, suddenly we came up to the end and probably I would like to ask you uh, what is something that you really think is going to be useful for you to take from this webinar, probably something that you also would like to hear next time, um, also probably something about presenting vocabulary or teaching vocabulary, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. But first, let's think about what was useful for you and something that you're going to take with you that you remembered and that you're going to take with you in your class. What is it, everybody? Oh, annotations were like a bomb because I didn't know about them. OK, cool. I what guess any can... scenarios are really cool. They will work out and that will add not only fun, but also like some use <laughs> of that thing. Mm -hmm. that they nice. will. They will. I personally am taking Kelvin clients with me. <laughs> That was hilarious. That was hilarious, Kevin Klein. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I agree. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. So basically, I also liked scenarios because they allow you to also share like some experience with your student and become closer. Mm -hmm. That's it. This is true. This is true. Yeah, I totally agree that sharing experience is the greatest idea for explaining the cap. Because we like they should understand that this cap is useful in their in their life, not just they are spending and wasting their time on that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Awesome, awesome. Again, you can review it once again. You can probably take some ideas, right, to understand them better and to use them in your class. Of course, this is why we all do this. Uh, probably we're going to come up with other questions. So you will have other questions to to give us, and we will think about something different for the next time. But at this point, I really thank you. I want to thank you for coming, uh, for sharing this, for absorbing this. And I hope you're going to use it in, in the future or even uh, in five minutes, as I will do. So yeah. Thank you, Alex. You rock. Yeah, thank you so much. You rock too. You got the most of the points today. <laughs> thank you very much. But you, you, all got, you all got points. Yeah, yeah. So thank you very much for this webinar. Yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. It was my pleasure. It was my pleasure. So yeah, I wish you a great day and stay positive. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.